Hi. Namaskar. Hi. Namaskar. Um, I am representing camp meditation. What? Camp meditation. I'm like a meditator and kind of I have been. Can you can you hold this mic closer to your mouth? Can you hear me? Now I can hear. Um, it's not about me and my story, but it's a little bit have to. Yes. And the thing is, there is no doubt about that what you are saying is true. And if we are present in the moment, this is the meditation. I agree. Yet uh, there are people who are asking about the importance of meditation, and you giving them the answer: meditation is not needed. And then I thought, what you say is true, your energy is real, so there is no doubt about that. But uh, we have schools, Zen, the highest form of yoga is meditation. You mentioned Kriya Yoga, um, Mahavatar Babaji used to meditate before he came, became Mahavatar Bhagaji, Bhagaji, the founder of Kriya Yoga. So meditation is not nothing. And Shiva, he somehow propounded to us more or less 112 meditation techniques. And what I'm hearing from what you're saying, you're already providing us four of his meditations. There are meditation techniques for a different type of people. And I'm wondering, do you think that your path is for everybody or is for some select people? And if it's for a select people, why say meditation is not necessary? Because we know there are other masters who are enlightened who actually achieve their success through meditation only. So I, I think everyone heard the question, right? Are you all hearing? David is your name, right? Shiva. But you had said another name that day. I like Shiva, it's my Indian name. Shiva, yes. okay. Yeah, why not? If you choose enlightenment as your goal, if you want to be enlightened and merge with Supreme Consciousness, then this is not the place for you to be. It's a clear statement, this is not a place to learn enlightenment. Why do I say that? Because the merging with the cosmic consciousness results in a detachment from the body itself, a detachment from the emotional body, the conceptual body, etc., etc. If you want to call what I have suggested the meditation, that's wonderful, you can call it a meditation. For example, surrendering to the soul, if that is a meditation, then that's beautiful, then I'm with you. When I'm talking about meditation not being necessary, and in fact not being good for the system, what I'm saying is, when you go into deep, long hours of meditation, you're putting your body into states where the consciousness has to leave the system and move outward, rather than expand laterally and into the materiality. Spirituality itself has a time trajectory that it follows. There is knowledge that came 5,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 1,000 years ago and so on. And There are different traditions, different masters, different teachers and one has to flow with what is resonating. It's not about this teaching is only for an elite few or it's for everybody. This is, it's like a source of water flowing down a mountain. It's flowing, this water, it's flowing. You want to come and drink at this source, you can drink. If it's not the water that tastes, then it's not the water for you. That's what I'm saying. But I'm very clear, conceptually clear about the fact that the spirituality, quote-unquote, which is practiced here, is one of presence, tuning inward to the soul, bending down to that soul in surrender. Surrender is the key word. If surrender is not your main inspiration, 
that experience of soul will not be there. It simply will not be there. To your question about the Mahavatar or also others who have attained enlightenment through meditation practices, the enlightenment that is attained is an experience of the ultimate samadhi state, which is the state of nirvikalpa samadhi, a samadhi without attributes, which means we are in a state where we actually don't know that we are there. It is a complete dissolution of identity. In order to connect with the individualized present soul here within, there is no need to make that process. It can be and should be circumvented. Which still doesn't mean if a guru that is teaching meditation comes to me, that I will not respect him and love him or her for that. This source is saying what this source is saying. And what it is clearly saying is, no need to take that route into enlightenment. It is a historical experiment with consciousness that has fulfilled its course. And now, what we know about consciousness is that merging with the Supreme Consciousness alienates the system from its materiality. And therefore, what is attempted is the actual descent of awareness, consciousness, whatever those various words we can use for it are, into the materiality of the system and that cannot happen if we push it outward. So, any practice, whether you want to call it meditation, contemplation, or just sitting there, or Zen, any practice that takes you out too long into cosmic states is a practice that is going to alienate you from the materiality of this body and this space which this body inhabits and the entire system and its actions. There is no doubt about that, no doubt, very clear statement. Of course, if you want to take up a meditation practice which appeals to you because you want to explore the cosmos, and if it is a calling which is stronger than what is being said here, then you will take that course and you will experience what needs to be experienced. You know what I mean? But when you come back, you have to enter back in the body, you have to re-enter this body and be present here and now. And that presence in the system is what actually makes this system a servant of the impulse of the individualized soul. So then the system starts to do what is the truth in every moment. It is very, very difficult for this system to emerge from truth when the awareness is not present. And even if you take up Shiva himself or Mahavatar Babaji or all the great masters that have experienced the enlightenment, they've had to come back they've had to reintegrate, they've had to self-realize. So, if you want to self-realize without the aberrations and the circuitous route around enlightenment, then just be present here and now, this is the body, you are in this body, you're not out there, you're here. Or you have a chance to go out and see what happens. Thank you. Uh First, I would like to say that your energy, your presence, your love is undeniable and uh, even if some things are like maybe creating a friction in my conscious, it's still like there is no denial about your presence and your truth and your love and wisdom. I, just one, it's not a question but like clarification thing. There are different types of meditations and uh, when we speak about Zen, Zen is basically to be present in a moment, here and now, totally in the body. Feeling your breathing, everything is a surrender. Because meditation is an approach to surrender for the people, maybe who are not so loving to begin with. So instead of finding that love and soul and feel that depth mm -hmm. with your 
clearly relating to, we are somehow struggling to, first of all, tolerate what we are, and then surrender to the thing, because you don't have to surrender, it's already happening by itself. Surrender is an active, proactive, postural decision. That is exactly what the conceptual says, no, no, if I just float, I'll be in surrender. That is surrender, it is not surrender, because surrender has an object and a subject. Surrender is to something. Inward? Yes. Thank you. You know, the, the ego is just that smart, it'll trick you into believing that what you are doing is surrender, but unless you are bending down to something. And since you brought up Westerners, okay, the Westerners can't bend to a guru outside, then bend down to the guru inside at least. But without a proactive postural statement, it is not a sadhana of surrender. Whoever it is who has said it, it is not an experience of concrete, proactive surrender that happens because the results show, it is different what happens. We are present, we are here and now, we are bent in surrender to the soul and we are, we are feeling that impulse over the noise of the ego. Whatever system is doing that is beautiful, I'm with it. And we can call it meditation, I'm good with that as well. You know what I mean, right? Thank you for your love, it's really inspiring and beautiful and hopeful. Well, if you also want to be loving like that, then stop wandering out and stay here and present. <laughs> <laughs> the bell has rung.